escapes from the cabin where she and Lou Heller had been imprisoned. Closely pursued by Kruger and his men, she hides in a cave where, unknown to her, a blast has been set. While Larry, the police, and Chuck try frantically to locate her, the payroll bandits discover her hiding place and... Don't touch that plunger, or you'll blow up that entire hill. Don't you come near me, I... Let's get out of here, quick. We got to beat it. The cops are at the cabin. What'd you do with Heller? He wasn't in. He must have got away. I'm a police officer. What happened here? Two men blow up the mine. I tried to stop them, but I couldn't. And there's a woman trapped inside. What? Brenda. You can't go that way, old fellow. It's blocked. But there's another smaller tunnel around the side of the hill there. Wait a minute, Chuck. I'll find Brenda. You two stay here and take care of this man. Take a look around, but be cautious. Give me a hand, Chuck. Hurt bad? I think she'll be all right in a minute. Give me some of that water. How in the world did she ever get mixed up in an explosion? I don't know. But she's a mighty lucky girl. Why, there was dynamite enough in that tunnel to blow up a whole village. Take your hands off me. Let me go. Take it easy, Brenda. Brenda, it's me, Larry. Yeah, it's me, too, Brenda. Oh, Larry. Hey, Chuck. You feel all right now? Yes, I do. I was stunned. Brenda, look, if you feel like talking, tell me what happened. I saw Lou Heller. Lou and another man made me a prisoner. And then they... Looking for you, Charlie. I want to talk to you. Talking to you, Lou, is like flirting with the devil. I can make it worth your while. Start talking. Uh, not here. I might be seen. <laughs> Everybody knows this hideout. Joe lived here. So what? I've always had a room over the one Joe used, just to kind of keep my fingers on things. Well, uh, you sure it's safe? You ain't gonna trick me. You said you'd make it worth my while to talk to you, didn't you? Yeah. Well, I'd be crazy to do anything, at least until after I find out what you've got to offer. Yeah, that's right. Besides, Lou, you've got everything to gain. Nothing to lose. And after I got the blindfold off, I could only see Lou Heller. The other man kept his back to me all the time. We know what Lou Heller looks like. When we pick him up, he'll tell us who he was working with. Yeah, if Lou stays alive that long. Yes, you forget, Larry. Lou wasn't exactly among friends. 
Lieutenant! Lieutenant Farrell! The explosion must have got one of them. Look what I found. I couldn't find any body, though. Maybe the explosion blew them to pieces. Well, this is something to go on. There's bound to be an identification mark here somewhere. You won't have to bother, Larry. I can tell you who that hat and coat belongs to. Lou Heller. Are you sure, Brenda? I'm positive, Chuck. And there goes our chances of talking to Lou. Maybe not. Oh, it's as plain as day. Either Lou got killed in the blast trying to trail me, or the gang killed him and planted his clothes in the mine to look as though he were done for accidentally. I still say maybe not. How do we know Lou Heller didn't do that himself? You got something there, Lieutenant? Oh, quit being a yes man. This time you're wrong, Mastermind. I told you Lou was a prisoner of those men. Let's get back to the car. Oh, uh, you'll be hearing from me again. Keep yourself in readiness to testify. Yes, sir. Come on. Mary, I don't agree with you at all. But you don't have to, Brenda. And while I'm on the subject, let me remind you again that you'd be much better off if you stayed in the office and pecked on your typewriter. Yeah, and so would we. You want to bet Lou Heller isn't dead? He does all my gambling. You're on, Timothy. And you got a bet. Let's have it. I know you've done a lot of work for Frank, Johnny. But I got an idea to cash in on that 250,000 bucks that Joe got in that hold up. Sound interesting? I don't know. I'm always interested in making a little change. Sit down. Thanks. Well, what I got in mind might uh, make Frank just a little bit sore. I work where I can make the most cash. Stop talking. Well, Frank's got the heat on me so hard, I ain't got a chance by myself. Yeah, the cops and Frank both make it kind of hard for you to operate, don't they? Yeah. There ain't much I can do about the cops, but... Uh... Are you figuring on getting rid of Frank and his gang? Yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty big order, Lou. Frank ain't no penny any boy, you know. The plan I got ain't no penny any idea either. I'm listening. Uh, you and me ain't big enough to take care of Frank by ourselves. So we get the cops to do it for us. I got a hunch I can put the finger on the guy that bumped off Vera Harvey. That'll interest the cops. But I gotta get into the Pelican Club to do it. Yeah? Why? Oh, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking I ought to call the cops and give them the guy's name, right? I'd do it that way. Ain't that easy. Say. You know who got very, you'd better start talking. Now, don't, don't get excited, Charlie. Don't get excited. One of Frank's gang did for all right, but I don't know which one now. Listen to me, Charlie. One of Frank's gang took care of Vera all right, and if I can get into the Pelican Club, I can prove which one did it. That washes out Frank. Leaving just you and me to get the information from Brenda Starr about the hiding place for that money. Come on, Charlie, I know what I'm talking about. This is your chance to put your hands on some real dough. All right. But give me more detail. Well? We lost Heller. I suppose you gave that newspaper girl some flowers for a going away gift, huh? Well, we did the best we could do. Never mind. Save your excuses for the big boss. I'll call you when it's time. Mr. Mayor, I'm listening. Yes, I'll take care of it. Well, I said, sir, I'm sorry. By all means, I'll talk to them immediately. In fact, Sooner than that. I can promise you, Mr. Mayor, that you'll never again have cause for any complaint about the reporters of this newspaper, nor the photographers. Thank you for your patience, sir. <laughs> Those are pretty good pictures, aren't they, Mr. Wallace? I think they're very nice pictures, Chuck, don't you? Well, if you don't want us for anything else, we go back to our work. Yeah, we got a lot to do. Come back here! Miss Starr, I don't want to be trite. And I wouldn't want you to think that I'm always hopping on the same thing, Mr. Appen. 
But I suppose you two heard that telephone conversation and understand the importance of it? Yes, Mr. Walters. There's no mistaking about that, Mr. Walters. Then keep your noses out of police affairs, understand? Brenda, write your story at once. It isn't bad. And these pictures are pretty good, too. Right away, Chief. They are pretty good pictures, aren't they, boss? Oh, I got those rubber keys you wanted, Miss Brenda, and I put them on for you, too. Thanks, Pesky. <laughs> That's one thing he couldn't get mixed. I'll knock this story out right away. You get those pictures down to layout. Sure enough. Give them to work. Everything's all set. What's this? That's the junk you gotta wear. What? Sure. It's a perfect setup for what you want, Lou. Nobody will ever recognize you in this. Oh, come on, try it on. Zelda will be up any minute now. Tell you all her gags. Hey, how about this Zelda? Can she be trusted? I told you before, yes. She's gotta do what I say. I helped her out of several tight spots over that phony setup she's running. Okay. Don't forget to telephone those invitations for me. Ah, there's plenty of time for that before tonight. Here's a hat and the shoes. Yes? Yes, thanks. I'll be there. Hmm. I didn't recognize that stool pigeon's voice. Well, what was it? We've been cordially invited to the Pelican Club tonight as guests of the management. Are you kidding? No. Besides some good food and entertainment, I was told we'd learn something interesting. Yes, I'll be there. Who is this? Hello? 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 Brenda, I can tell by the expression on your face there's something cooking. How'd you guess? Now, don't tell me you're going to run off and leave this nice lunch. No, of course not. Chuck, you got a nice clean white shirt just back from the laundry? Sure, what? <laughs> You're going to need it. I knew it. I knew it. We're going to a funeral. Hey, Brenda, I always thought a clean white shirt was something you got buried in. We're going to the Pelican Club tonight. Say that again. We got a great story. That telephone call was a tip. Yeah? Who, what? Now, wait a minute. Oh, you can stay here if you don't want to go. Well, who said I didn't want to go? Sure I do. I just hope there's a nice dinner thrown into the deal, that's all. They don't specialize in dinner at places like that. What do they specialize in? You're much too young to be asking such questions. <laughs> It's impolite to point, my boy, but if you look over there... What are they doing here? Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present to you that amazing act, Madame Zelda and her assistant, Abdul. <laughs> Madame Zelda will read anybody's mind. Just ask her assistant. But remember, she can read your mind, so uh, be careful. Nervous about this. Mm 
Madam Zelda, I get my first impression at this table. I feel that this gentleman is hiding something. Ah, yes, Abdul. I get the same impression. Look in the gentleman's right-hand coat pocket, and you will find a, a camera. You don't mind, do you? Ah, right! The gentleman must be one of those annoying camera fiends. <laughs> Give me that. Thank you. Salam alaikum. Give me your support, please. Annoying camera fiend. <laughs> that Zelda knows her stuff. <laughs> Hello, boys. Having a good time? Yes, uh, very nice show you have here, Frank. Thank you for inviting us. Inviting you? Oh, oh yes, of course. Sure. Oh, uh, will you pardon me? I'll be right back. Surely. <laughs> Keep your eyes and ears open, Kruger. That cop just thanked me for inviting him here. Inviting him? Tell me, Madame Zelda, what is this gentleman thinking about? Concentrate, madame. That dish. What is the gentleman thinking about? That gentleman is thinking he hopes his wife doesn't see him. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Madam Zelda, I get a very strong impression here. It is not a good one. You are right, Abdul. The impression is an evil one. I feel fear, fear everywhere. Tell me, madame, what do you feel? Someone near you is thinking of murder. Murder? Can you tell me, madame, if this man is thinking of a murder that has been committed? Concentrate, madame. Is he thinking of a past murder or... Uh... He is thinking of a past murder. Can you tell us anything more about this man? Can you tell us his thoughts? If there is a police officer in the house, I would like to have him make himself known. I'm Lieutenant Farrell of the police department. Everybody keep your seats and stay right where you are. Go ahead, Madam Zelda. Look in the pocket of the man standing beside you. Oh, Abdul, you will find the gun that fired the bullet that killed Vera Harvey. Shots in the dark. A killer accused. Can Brenda and Larry get the rest of the evidence? Did the shots find a human target? See Chapter 9, Dark Magic. The Further Adventures of Brenda Starr, reporter, at this theater next week. Thank you.